Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, for being with us. Looking around the globe and all the various contagions that we run into on a day-to-day -day basis, we see it on the news, we hear about it, actually it even comes into our own communities, so it's very difficult to escape. But natural disasters is something that is becoming more commonplace as we really do have climate change. And so there's many things that we need to think about and do and to mitigate as far as natural disasters of all type that are coming in. And a gentleman who's a specialist in this, has a number of decades doing this kind of work, is Charles. He goes by Chuck Botwick, President, CHB Infrastructure, Technology, and Marketing, and also has a what's called IPAC Individual Personal Aid Kit Company as well. And looking at all this, uh, the IPAC is people can take care of themselves individually. But on the other side is that, you know, a lot of these disasters are huge, way beyond what we can do as individuals. In many cases, it's way beyond what most governments can do at the same time. So looking at this, Chuck, why is it so important that we pre-plan, pre-think, uh, pre-stage things before we get a disaster and that we are well prepared, which in most cases we're never. Well, again, Sam, thanks for having me. Uh, disasters and I'll call them event situations, which create uh, uh, very big strains on resources uh, to take care of populations are a big challenge. And uh, disasters create uh, public hygiene disasters within the disaster itself that a lot of people don't contemplate. Mm -hmm. So we have to be aware of of these uh, uh, in a hurricane, a flood, uh, an earthquake, there can immediately be. And now fires are becoming mm -hmm. as dangerous as any of these. Mm -hmm. Right. Which we never had to really think that much about. In the, right. Had some forest fires, but these wiping out whole towns. Right. It's a big so deal. in any of these cases, you're, you're causing a big burden on ordinary life. Uh, and what can happen very quickly, you can devolve into a public health nightmare mm -hmm. besides the fact that maybe people are knocked out of their homes, uh, they've lost possessions, you have damage to public infrastructure. As an example, uh, in, in areas that are tropical or subtropical, when you have hurricanes and disasters, you often have uh, uh, standing water uh, remaining which result in huge outbreaks of mosquitoes, what professionals would call insect vectors, right. which create an absolute ni nightmare situation for responders uh, where they almost need moon suits because of the outbreak of insects and the insects can spread malaria in certain parts of the world and so on. So these are, are foreseen, unforeseen consequences. Mm -hmm. So part of it is that we have to be prepared for the hygiene impacts of, of major disasters. And that includes uh, all the basics from clean water, mm -hmm. ability to manage wastewater, and uh, public health needs. Now looking at this, uh, one of the things that uh, many organizations are doing and governments is going in and try to rebuild very quickly. So we have, uh, you know, look at, uh, 
picture here as far as people re rebuilding homes so they get back to some kind of employment, mm -hmm. right. some kind of normalcy as far as, mm -hmm. you know, their day and nights and all these other things. Because when you have a disaster, everything is disrupted and you want to get back to some kind of pace. Uh, looking at uh, all of this and getting pack people back to normal, what are the, some of the things that we need to really think about in that that's very useful so psychologically, emotionally, people are able to get through whatever disaster that they've had, the losses they've had, right. but yet realize that the sun's gonna rise tomorrow. Well, one thing that really helps people no matter what and what situation is to be able to take care of basic personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. So just having a toothpaste and toothbrush and soap and water and some towels or towelettes uh, uh, ability to uh, wash your clothes, um, sunscreen if you're in an area that has a lot of sun, uh, just basic hygiene items can at least make people feel comfortable. That they're as missed immediately as is water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being able to distribute hygiene items is extremely important in almost any disaster situation. Yeah, you were telling, we were talking earlier about, you know, just being able to take a shower, even if it's cold water, and, but mm -hmm. uh, a little tiny bar of soap, but yet it just refreshes you in ways beyond what we can imagine, you know, we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But another one you talked about, I thought was quite interesting, just being able to brush your teeth. Yeah, it's one way to feel a little bit fresher. Right, looking at the hospital that we have in front of us, this is something that uh, many, uh, situations, you know, like a Puerto Rico or, uh, you know, Houston, those places where they had great damage to infrastructure. A lot of it was for the health infrastructure was destroyed. So uh, why is that so uh, critically important to have this, but to have it pre-staged so it's being shipped as a disaster is well, happening, not waiting months to try to rebuild the, something? The answer is that in a, a disaster or event situation, or public health crisis like coronavirus and others, you need surge capacity. Mm -hmm. Surge capacity doesn't come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to, as a society, as individuals, uh, as companies, to be more prepared to be able to mobilize, uh, to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. uh, beyond our normal infrastructure. That means having uh, mobile hospitals, mobile equipment, pre-placed uh, kits with food, water, hygiene supplies in various nodes in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, these disruptions are happening with more frequency and in different ways, and we need to be ca capable to deal with the surge capacity by pre-placement. Mm -hmm. And looking at this hospital here, this is something that actually can be done. What's about this? Let's just uh, stop here for a minute. What's about this hospital we're seeing now that allows the surge capability? And how was it designed? And then how is it delivered and set up so that actually it does respond? Right. Not quite, but almost as instantly as possible. Well, the, these systems are designed to be completely portable and mobile easy and quick to deploy. So they're containerized. They're containerized. Uh, they can be put on a, a, a cargo plane, a truck, and brought to a location and set up and within very short time, hours, mm -hmm. uh, you just have to have medical personnel to manage them. That's another issue of surge capacity. Of course. Uh, but the, to answer your question, you need to have the ability to have equipment that can operate independently where there may not be any power, mm -hmm. there may not be any water, which means you also have to have the ability to have portable power, mm -hmm. portable water purification, uh, portable communications. All of the things that are normally working, you have to count on that they will not be, or you're in a remote area where you don't have them. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at the outside of this and the portability and all that, but looking at the inside, uh, I mean, this looks almost like a normal hospital, but all this really is portable equipment. That's right. And so in having this, how do we stage that? How do we know what capacity that we need? Uh, or is that based on the size of the community before the disaster? We're planning that. 
or do we look at past disasters and say, okay, this is what's happened in the past, or is it a fusion of both of those? Well, I, I think the uh, medical professionals are very good to help, that I've worked with to help design uh, packages of, of medical supplies mm -hmm. that are appropriate for a certain uh, uh, population, also by age. Pediatric supplies are different, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how to package them into movable uh, cases uh, that can easily be identified in the field. So again, it, it, it requires professionals to sort of design a medical cache, if you will, mm -hmm. of, of supplies that are appropriate. Mm -hmm. and, and I would have to say that what's appropriate to a civilian population is very different than, say, if, if there were a military situation. Yeah, and the interesting thing about this, Chuck, is that uh, over the last couple of years, because the size, scale, and intensity of these disasters, more and more military bases are being hit, and some of them almost totally destroyed. You know, and that's billions of dollars worth of infrastructure because mm -hmm. a military base, in many cases, being on the size and scale, is a functioning city. Correct. And it's on 24, you know, 24-7, 365. So looking at water and the need for that, and it's off-grid in all, most all cases, because there's many cases there's nothing to plug into because that's been destroyed. Right. And also wastewater, something we don't really talk about or think about. Right. Well, you hit the key word uh, before I did, which is off-grid. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about the fact that you're going to be <coughs> off-grid, meaning that you don't have any working or, or easily available water, power, sewer, uh, and so on. So no grid whatsoever. Right. So what you try to do is work with equipment that you know can stand on its own, operate off-grid with its own power supply, mm -hmm. and to be able to uh, design systems that can sustain for a longer period of time in the field completely off-grid. I want to leave this up. You know, this is one of the things that you and I have been talking about literally for years now since we've known each other. And more and more of the conversation, uh, conversations coming up as far as National Guard bases, military bases, because again, they are the ones that almost are the first responders of any scale mm -hmm. in a lot of these communities and can really help out. So how do we think about such permanent hardened facilities mm -hmm. And from the standpoint of distributed energy, distributed solid waste disposable, distributed water, all these things that we thought about, you know, as far as being part of our basic, you know, infrastructure, and in many cases, more and more is being destroyed. Well, it's important for uh, the key uh, support elements of our society to be, be able to operate mm -hmm. off-grid in case of disasters are the ones that are supposed to be able to take care of us so they have to be operational and the way they can be operational is that in an event situation where normal infrastructure is interrupted they have the ability to continue to operate so actually the direction towards decentralized systems uh, gives stronger sustainability mm -hmm. yeah man we have a photograph up here of people actually distributing these uh, individual uh, personal aid kits and and uh, also we'll see the mask but you know this again the frequency of this the intensity and the just the enormity of the disaster and the loss what do we need to be thinking about over these next 5 10 to 15 years as and as people leaders in our community and we well, got to be quick we need to anticipate and expect these things to happen and be prepared pre-planning. I tell you, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is Chuck Botwick, president of CHB Infrastructure Technology Marketing. Also the uh, president and uh, managing partner, IPAC Individual Personal Aid Kits. And thank you for being with us as we create you, the Emerald Planet.